April 8th, 9th, 11th. Well, already April 11th. Uh, we got a lot to talk about today. Uh, Brendan Martin, our executive producer down in Ocala, is working on things. Storms all over the Southland. Uh, down here in Dixie, man, it is just hammering the rain and the thunderstorms. So we're going to get through this. This is like a pilot flying through storms. But uh, Coach Matt Dean joins us from over in Memphis at Rhodes College. Bo Carter, one of the great orators uh, out in Dallas, Fort Worth, with the uh, National Football Foundation and Baseball Writers of America. Um, also one hell of an author, so we'll talk to him about uh, lots of sports in the SEC and around the country. John Hartwell, AD at ULM, joins us. We'll get some technical questions. we got a lot of stuff to talk to him. Vince Ferrara, later in the show, joins us from the Sports Animal in Knoxville. So look, smash that subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner. Allow notifications. Hit that button on your Android or iPhone and uh, tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, everybody, because we are about to come at you with a lot of great information. We've spent two days in Little Rock. That is an awesome city. Thank you, Jim and Pat McClellan and Mike Miller and all the great folks we met over there. Unbelievable people. We'll be right back. Sidelines with Rob Brown. Talk sporty to me. All right, man. Uh, gentlemen, what a, uh, what a week it has been. We've been in Clarksville, Tennessee, Little Rock the last couple of days. Met a lot of great Razorback Sigma News over there. Went to lunch with them yesterday. Pretty cool restaurant called Bossa Nova. Uh, it's Brazilian. Unbelievable. I recommend you get the hearts of palm chicken soup. It was off the charts good. Little Rock is a really clean city. And I think about how Memphis, Matt, we got to do something. We need to give everybody in Memphis a giant construction industrial sized trash bag and say, fill it up and, uh, you know, you'll get a, uh, a steamer pack of crystals or something. We, we got to do something, but a lot of fun over there. One thing I'm finding out, guys, golly, the interest. Uh, in the questions from the fans out there, where are we going in college athletics? It is unsustainable, these NIL deals. Uh, I'll start with you, Coach, and then go to Bo. If you're a coach right now, your roster, you look at Bruce Pearl at Auburn. I mean, every day somebody hits the porthole. Uh, KD Johnson, and I don't know if they just said, well, look, you're not going to get the playing time here. He's going to go somewhere else. And then Trey Donaldson, you know, he, he's out. Now Aiden Holloway, he came in as a five-star. He wasn't even close to being a five-star, what I saw out of him. I go back to what our man, Coach John Brady, said. All these people say, oh, this guy's a lottery pick. No one claimed Aiden Holloway was a lot, lottery pick. <laughs> but he goes, he goes, let me tell you something. I've coached a few lottery picks in my day. Lottery picks don't throw up six points and two rebounds. They're pretty much 20 and 12 or better, night in and night out. That's why they're a lottery pick. Coach Matt Dean, let's talk about that and where we're going. We're on a train to nowhere, are we? Well, good morning, guys. Bo, always a pleasure. Rob, we got you settled down from some technical difficulties. I hope it sounds like you're a little smart. Right? It, it's, Brent, Brendan is the captain of the ship. It's these yes. storms, and, and it's not his fight. It's the internet or the interweb. Yeah, yeah, we, we got this. So the first thing I want to talk about, it's interesting, you know, with the whole uh, John Calipari to Arkansas. Um, yeah. Because I think it really is a win-win for both schools. And, and hear me out here for a second. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have some people I know that are season ticket holders uh, for Big Blue Nation, have been lifelong fans that know people inside the athletic department. And the reason I say this is a win-win, when it appeared like Calipari was going to stay for another year, 
Um, people don't realize Kentucky had the money to buy them out, buy them out, but they chose not to. But I think it was strategic um, because what happened is if you if the story is correct that I'm hearing, um, his representation went back and asked for a counter, and basically they're like, no. So then he takes the Arkansas deal, and now I'm hearing that Big Blue Nation boosters are ready to up their NIL contributions to get a different coach in there. So I think sometimes we are masked a little bit of really what's going inside these programs. Um, I mean, I'm hearing ridiculous numbers, even out of yeah. the University of Memphis, the money we're giving kids. So yeah, it, it's, it's not going away, guys, but what's going to happen, I think, in football is we're going to have 60 programs pretty soon and maybe four or five quadrants, and we're going to be like an NFL playoff bow. Um, I think it's coming. We'll have a commissioner, and I just think college football will change forever. That's just my opinion. Bo oh, Carter, they're, they're uh, not too bad for us fanatics because we're going yeah. to still have all this competition. You're, you're still going to have your SECs, your Big Tens, and obviously no Pac-12, but um, it's going to be – there's too much money in this TV situation. Mm. Yeah. Going away. Yeah. It's not going away. No, it's it's not, and 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 the problem is that w when you look at uh, when you when you look at what is going on uh, around the country, and you talk to fans, they are. And I had lunch yesterday with about sixteen uh, Arkansas alums, all Sigma News, great great men, I and mean, they were fantastic. I mean, one of the one of the guys there was ninety two years old, a doctor. I think I think Little Rock in the state of Arkansas is in a green zone. These people look, you're forever young, but every one of them remembered fondly. I mean, they, these guys, most of them still working. They're very sharp. They hate what's going on in college athletics. Yeah. And I can assure you, they're the ones that you're going to be going to, Bo Carter, when you're asking for money. Now, you're going to get some low-hanging fruit right now with NIL, but these guys, they work for what they've got. I don't think any of them were born on third base and, thought, and think they hit a triple. No, no, and uh, boy, I totally agree with Matt. We're, we're even hoping maybe the old Southwest Conference will reform as the uh, Southwest Division of yeah. the Super Conference. <laughs> I may have a hard job over there again, Rob, after tw after twenty eight years. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, it, it, I think it's coming. The NCAA keeps denying it, and the uh, several I, I saw a quote from an SEC coach and AD that the, it's you know two or three years off or whatever. But you, it, it's. Uh, with, with TV and everything running, uh, Matt, I think one thing it's going to do, and Rob, you might agree with me too, uh, the teams outside the 60 or 64, whatever they do, are going to demand like a million dollar guarantee or, you know, $1.5 million guarantee to play these teams, you know, because they need to get a slice of the pie too. Yeah. So it's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, um, it, remember the golden rule, he who has the gold rules, I guess. <laughs> so, it's it's uh in in the transfer portal and the NIL are, are uh, totally out of control. But then uh, it, it's 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 like my good friend Senator John Kennedy from Louisiana, the old uh, Foghorn Leghorn, said, "All we need, yes, boys, all you need now is for Congress to get involved." <laughs> so, <laughs> it's right. Something's got to give somewhere. Yeah, and, and and smart people that have made a lot of money also can tell you, and and, and you really. You're really hard pressed to find anybody. You're really hard pressed to find anybody that is able to tell you that they have not struggled to get where they are. And now you're, you're giving these 18 and 19 year old student athletes all this money. And I, I was reading on message boards last night at some different schools, and you can just fill in the blank of whatever school it is, and they're going, "It's not about us anymore. The athletic directors and the coaches don't give a damn about us." It's all about coddling and pacifying these spoiled brats that, are, that they call student athletes. And, and honestly, the criticism is warranted, uh, but it's on both sides. The NCAA, Matt, and John Hartwell just notified me he's had a, a major, uh, just an issue come up that he's got to take care of. That's what happens when you're an AD. you got a lot going on uh, and love having him on here. He's always welcome anytime, as all y'all are. But – this is, this is, you, you know, Philip Marshall, Auburn Undercover, wrote a great story a couple of days ago. He said, don't blame the student athletes. It's a lack of leadership, Matt. I mean, look, nobody's saying, because if I had an 18-year-old son or daughter that had an opportunity to make that kind of money, 
I, I would be like, yeah, go for it. But I would also say, you got to remember that there's things in life bigger than you. And this me generation, me too, and all that garbage. Okay. What about us? You know, what about the team? Because you're going to be working for a company one day. And, and we're, this is trickling into the workplace, Matt Dean. You work, you, you're at Rhodes. A lot of really smart student athletes. Really smart. Uh, and they're going to be going to law school, medical school, a number of things. If they don't learn how to work in college, they should have learned that from their mom and dad coming up. When are they going to learn? Well, well, ultimately, we, we know after the fact now that this was kind of Saban's last straw, right? He yeah. just finished another season. They got to the football playoffs, led Michigan four minutes ago, lost in overtime, whatever. And the first week outside of that, he comes back to the office trying to get these guys better. And they're talking about, we need more money. And he's like, I'm done with this, right? Yeah. So I think we know now um, this is probably – for, for coaches, and, and I agree, don't blame the student athletes, but for coaches, the ones that are going to excel at this are the ones that are able to manage all the dynamics. We talk about the portal. It's not just the portal, but how do I manage a, a locker room where my quarterback's getting a million five guys and NIL deals, and I don't got, you know, I got 100 kids on the roster, and I know 70 through 100 aren't getting much. I mean, yeah. Now, you can also say to a degree that's an NFL locker room for 53 guys because we're not paying the special teams and backup linebacker as much as we are the starting quarterback. I get that. So I think my perspective, Bo, is my son works for a, a young, upcoming head coach, Dan Lanning, mm. um, who understands that this is almost like navigating as an NFL these days. You know, you, you honestly have to figure out – how much money you got, where are you going to spend your money, and how are you going to manage the kid that had a really good year and wants more the money the next year? And, and I don't know the specifics of what's going on, guys, and my son works in it. He don't tell me a damn thing, and he shouldn't. But I will tell you this, you guys, I, I, I know some stuff that I can't disclose here. You guys would be shocked at what even some programs starting quarterbacks in the AAC are making. I am just telling you, you would be shocked. So it's yeah. It, everyone's got here's the thing. Everyone's got a couple of really big boosters, and they want to keep their quarterback right. But I think it's tricky if if that locker room knows that Bo's my starting quarterback, and he's getting a million, and no one else in the team's getting more than two hundred k. I mean, that's guys. That's what we're dealing. That that's the reality. That's almost like you have to have a, a psychotherapist to to be your head coach now because yeah. I think these kids are going to leave me after a year because they're. They're not happy with the payouts to maybe two or three kids because they know what's going on. Yeah. Well, on? well, college athletics today is a lot like the old game we played, musical chairs. You're going to just keep transferring around from one school to the other. Eventually, you're not going to have a chair to sit your ass on. I'll tell you something. One of the gentlemen I had lunch with yesterday, very smart man, uh, said the NIL is the match and the portal is the gasoline. And together, it's just an explosion. Of, it's just, and, and Bo Carter and Matt, we are here today. We're a product of loving our schools, our teams. I mean, it's emotional. You get, you get attached to it. And here we are now looking at these. They call them student athletes. But... I don't know what, what we call – you're going to see the fans lose that love for their teams. They're going to love their school. But, you know, a lot of schools shut down during the draconian pandemic lockdowns. Uh, some schools like Auburn never stopped in-person learning. But if you stopped in-person learning for a couple of years or longer, man, that's going to have a negative effect unless you do something about it. And, Bo, this is what gets me. The discussion we had yesterday was, why isn't anybody doing anything about all this? I'm like, we, I, we, we, we are. I mean, you've got to. You've got to stand up and say, like, like Dawn Staley the other day, well, if you uh, feel like you're a woman, you ought to be a woman. Are you kidding me? This is just <laughs> asinine. Look, men play in men's sports, women play in, in women's sports. 
When Rally Gaines is, we got to get Rally Gaines back on. But she's just one person. But I, this is nuts that we football. When, when Derek Mason tried that little stunt at Vanderbilt with the female kicker, what if she'd have done a fake field goal and gone around right in and run into someone like Takeo Spikes or Marcus Spears out there on the edge or Javon Kurtz? Congress would convene with hearings about football is too violent. We can't have this game. We, man, we've got to get let, quit letting a small fractional percentage of the population run things. Or, or I don't walk around on eggshells, Bo. Write a story. Give us a lead. It's right, and uh, Rob, great, great points, and and Matt hit it on the head. The most important person in this management of this is the director of player personnel. I mean, everybody. If you look, uh, uh, this has been you know a major hire for uh, especially college football and college basketball. Even going down to the spring sports, uh, you you've got to find a guy to, to sort of coddle, for lack of a better word, keep people happy, and then find uh, you know, just like Kansas State two years ago, Rob and uh, and Matt had fourteen transfer students. And Rob, I think, uh, man, I think they went to the grade eight that year. Was you, yeah. you? You have to be a, uh, a a mastermind at putting a new team together every year. What you, you you just can't count on. Uh, uh, think and then, Matt, you've seen this too. The junior colleges are really getting uh, taking a hard hit on this thing because yeah. people are just moving from one you know one program to another. So so even Robbie Avila, uh, Robbie Avila from uh, Indiana State, their great uh, you know power forward center, whatever is is hit the portal. So. He's out there with uh, looking for a you know million dollar NIL deal somewhere. So it 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 is uh, gotten insane. Bo and 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 I said this to Matt. You're a coach. Do you have that conversation with these student athletes and say, "Look, I'm here. Uh, I've worked my way here. You know, you've gotten here. You're a freshman in college. Uh, how committed are you?" And, and because to me, the coach is in charge. Your, your boss is in charge. What we're doing, Matt, is we're just throwing away uh, the chain of command. That's why we got all this chaos. The NCAA is they've already dug their own grave. Well, let's just let's just push the dirt on top of them. What are we waiting on? So I also have another theory of what's going on with some of these these kids with their la- using their last year of COVID, we're almost through that phase, right? And <laughs> the, in, in, in the college basketball, I'll give you a unique example. Um, we've known this for years. There's only, there's only two rounds in the NBA draft. A lot of time, the NBA scouts prefer these 19-year-olds that really haven't done much in college, but we're, we're drafting on potential, Bo. So I'm a 22-year-old. I've had a really solid career. Let's say I'm at an institution in a power five. I'm averaging 15 points a game but I don't have the measurables, um, let's say, that they want in the NBA for my position. Uh, so I know I may have to go overseas to make my money if I want to stay playing ball. So yeah. what a lot of these kids have done in the last few years, and I don't blame them on this. All right, let's see if there's a blue blood out there that wants to pay me for a year that will help me financially, and I, you know, however I use that money, before I go in a career <clears> – <throat> Either it's overseas basketball or maybe I, I know Rob Brown and he's going to hire me as an intern. I'm a finance major. But some of these kids are getting smarter. And, and actually some of the coaches are meeting with these kids and saying, look, I want you in my program. Our NIL money is X. If you think you've overperformed in four years here, go somewhere else and get your money because I still want what's best for you. I believe that's happening in certain places. And, and yeah. you know, Bo hit it with, uh, I believe it's Robbie Avila. You mentioned Indiana State, Bo. Um, their NIL pool is not strong. So if he goes to a power five and gets a couple hundred thousand dollars next year, I don't know that. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, I understand that because Robbie is not going to be an NBA star. He'd be working in someone's accounting firm someday. Mm-hmm. Okay. So why not get a chunk of money right now if I'm that 50 year kid, if someone's willing to take me because I've overperformed? The last four years in a mid-major. So I think there's a different way of looking at this too, guys. I think we all get pissed off because we're trying to build our own team within our own alma mater base. 
But these kids are trying to build their future. And for some of these kids, if they know they're not going to be NBA star, I commend them. Go get the cash, man. Bag of cash, brother. And, and that that's what's happening. Like Dylan Gabriel left Oklahoma, the quarterback, Bo. Was he, he's really maybe 5'10". I think he went to Oregon for a big NIL deal. Why not? He's not going to be an NFL quarterback in all likelihood. If he can make a million, some, somewhere between one and two million, why not go for it? Bo Carter, National Football Foundation, proud native son of Sheffield, Alabama. We'll be over there next week for the famous Colbert County Hall of Fame. We need to get mad in there too, Rob. <laughs> that's, right. hey, that's a beautiful part of the state. It Very really young. is. It really it's is. where Mark Sears is from. Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, Ozzie Newsom, the whole gang. Uh, yep. Heine Manoush, a lot of good guys. No, yep. Bob, your point, no, to your point, though, uh, that that makes total sense because, uh, you know, you and Matt, you hit it on the head, too. Uh, find some people that and, – and this is one of the things that Rob and Matt, you've seen this, Alabama, Auburn, when they recruit kids, they said, hey, we know a guy in the construction, but you want to be a construction engineer. Correct. We know a guy in Birmingham or a guy in Mobile that will hire you right out of college or whatever. So I mean, and that that's that was one incentive. Now I guess they can have a yeah <laughs> summer job or make personal appearances. The one the one thing that people are juggling, Matt, you you're probably a little with your son too. You're y'all are on the inside with this. Uh, they're they're having some issues with the uh, kids. Okay, we want uh, our NIL sponsor wants you to go to uh, uh, autograph signing at. Matt Dean Motors this afternoon. Well, I got football practice at three o'clock. Well, talk to the coach or talk to your position coach and tell them you'll be there at three thirty or so. So I, that's that's what they're they're kind of being pulled in different directions. If you got a social media presence like the women, like many of the women yeah. do, you've got a gold mine out there. So they're they're some of the highest. But uh, you know, the, uh, 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 Olivia, the lady, Olivia, at, Dunn. Uh, Olivia Dunn at LSU, and uh, some of the others are making millions. Well, one thing about Olivia Dunn is we know she's all over social media and doing TV commercials. And uh, how good a gymnast is she? I mean, how many tens has she had? I have no idea. She's just, it's kind of like these bon voyants, like George Plimpton, you know, the life of the party, wearing your ascot. What, what, what are you actually doing? Um, I, I see where, you know, and, and people are saying, Rob, what about your belief in the free market? One of our viewers is telling me that. Do you still, hell yeah, I still believe in the free market. I absolutely do. But what what we don't need, we do not need Congress involved. So put that off the table. But that's just my opinion. But we've got we got to tell these. We're, we're going to get rid of the twenty four and twenty five year olds that are hanging around because of the the, the China virus lockdowns. Okay, that it's like these perpetual. They they can't graduate. It's eternal students. So, Matt, when I look at where we are, like my, my 25-year-old son told me last week, he said, Dad, in 2006, if you would have invested $750 into Chipotle, today it would be worth a little over 100000 So what I'm saying is my kids all invest in the market. I mean, they've grown up with a father who's a financial advisor. Um, I would, I'll volunteer my services right now to go down to any school and talk about financial literacy. And you know what? You don't need a big, expensive car. Uh, you know, the, the, most of the wealthy people I know drive old cars. The biggest client account I've ever had was a couple from Des Moines, Iowa. And they used to come ride up to my office on their tandem bicycle. Um, you know, th th this flash and spending $300,000 on a car, you're an idiot. And it's just some, nobody has the balls to stand up to this stuff, Matt. If I'm a coach, I say, look, man, y'all don't be flashing all that crap around me. Put that money. Get Milburn Drysdale involved from the Beverly Hillbillies. I mean – that's why Uncle Jed had so much money. Uh, so, anyway, enough of that. i got to ask you that, Matt. After the game uh, that we had Monday night, Dan Hurley made the comment, UConn is driving college basketball and running college basketball. 
How can you argue with him? Right now you can't because essentially no one was even close for two straight years in a row in the NCAA tournament in the final four. You can make a case that, um, you know, I thought Alabama actually played mm-hmm. a little better than Purdue did. If you look at some of the runs that they were able to make with their ability to shoot the street three and stretch their defense. Um, but you know, it's funny. Danny Hurley had a clip a few years ago, guys, where he was in a press conference. I think they just got eliminated. They may have been like in the quarterfinal or semifinal loss. He says, Hey, I just want to let you know, no, it's coming. It's going to happen. We're going to, we know it's coming. So I think he's, he's a mastermind at getting the personnel that fits his system run. If you look at some of their personnel, it's not like they got a 25 point a game score. They got a collection of guys, you know, and they actually, Bo, they ran the same game plan that Tennessee and Rick Barnes did, except they executed a little bit better. I mean, they shut down everybody else. They let Eddie get his, they shut down everyone else. Now, one of the things that hurt Tennessee is they allowed on the high ball screen and roll uh, Braden Smith to get downhill for for Purdue. I'm talking about when Tennessee played Purdue, okay? Tennessee, I think, led in the first half of that game 11, and Purdue got back and then took over the game and then won the game. But that game was a 63-60 game, and so Purdue made a late three in the last two minutes to stretch it to two-possession game. So my point is – you don't see many open threes on Monday night. UConn is tenacious. They contest every shot. They rebound the misses, and they push the ball in transition and get easy offense. It's a pretty simple formula, but it's a buy-in, guys, because you don't have a superstar. I mean, Clinton will be in the pro someday, but it's not like he's going to be, you know, um, what I call a megastar. But he, I think he'll be a serviceable NBA post player. Yeah. But they have a collection of guys that drink the Kool-Aid, and they probably know in UConn and their alumni base are taken care of in their NIL as well. So it's a great place to play basketball. Hey, I'll give you a stat. I'm an Iowa Hawkeye fan, right? In 1999, Dr. Tom Davis, last year at the Hawkeyes, I believe, we lost to UConn in the Sweet 16, 78 to 68, okay? Mm-hmm. In the last 25 years after that game, Iowa has not been back to a Sweet 16, and UConn has won all six of their national championships. Nice. This is a 25-year run of dominance. That's what I'm telling you. Yeah. Not just right now, Rob, but you look at Jim Calhoun, even Kevin Ollie won a national championship there as a player and a coach, and now you've got six national championships in 25 years. Bo, you're the historian. I think in the last quarter of a century, there's been no one that has that level of success. And I think there's 6 no title games, I think. I'll throw the stats at you. Kevin Skarbinski, the Birmingham Leeds, Carbo knows, gave them to us. Since UConn won that championship in 99, uh, they won six. Duke has won three. Yeah. North Carolina's won three. Kansas has won two. And Kentucky has won one. Now, a non-considered, non-traditional blue blood, Florida won back-to-back in 06, 07. But, uh, you know, I, 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 like, I like those Hurleys. You got to love those Irish Catholics, man, St. Anthony's. The father has won 26 state championships. And he's playing in a legitimately competitive league up there, Bo Carter. Yeah. All right, Bo – you think about where we are in football, spring football. Uh, Vince Ferrara is going to be on here with us in a minute. A lot going on. Matt referenced it a minute ago. We don't have the Pac-12 anymore. It's gone. Uh, what's left of it, I don't, it's, it's just gone. We've got Big 12, Big 10, ACC, SEC. Which conference do you think will be the next one to collapse, or are we done with the collapsing and we've got the four we've been talking about? I I think it's going to stay, but in a perfect world, they'd love to have four with 16 teams in them, and you've got a perfect, uh, you know, 16 team play. You can take uh, four out of each, although Matt's seen this too. The uh, the SEC and the Big Ten want to guarantee three 
Yep. <laughs> three, three automatic spots in the in the expanded uh, college football playoff, which is uh, run by our friend uh, President Mark Keenum, former Corinth High football play, Corinth High School Warriors uh, football player in Mississippi. But uh, it, it's it's going to really be interesting to see. Uh, Matt, Matt hit it on the head too. I think they're going to be more geographical divisions in this new super conference or whatever. So uh, you won't, you know, it'll, it will bring things back on a more regional basis or whatever or you want to have to. Uh, although uh, ESPN will dictate some intersectional games that they want for ratings, I guess. So uh, it's uh, it's all being driven by TV and money, as we as we know. Well, you know, the TV and the money part of it. The fans buying the tickets, Matt, that's the next battle we've got to fight. Uh, there are a lot of fans out there who spend a lot of money. And it's, I promise you, from my level, you, you can't keep going to a handful of boosters and asking them to pay for everything. Matt, they, they, you've got, you, you, the only NILs collectives that work are the big mass populist movement. You know, you might have 600 people giving $10,000 a year. Uh, you know, they would look at that as those were the dues, the association dues on their condo at the beach. But if we go to paying student athletes all the same, then you know what that invites is just people under the table paying them more. We, we've seen what some schools will do. Uh, Matt, usually it takes four or five years when something new is launched to work it out. Microsoft Windows. I think that's what's going to happen with this. And I, I really believe this. A lot of this is going to be thrown in the garbage. That's what I think is going to happen. Well, I'll just I'll take a guess that you know if, if we're going to do this the way you described, Bob, but I I don't know how it's going to shake out. But there's going to have to eventually be a salary cap involved too. So that's what happens. And essentially, you're making amateur sports, pro sports, and every pro sports for the most part, um, there's some kind of cap involved when it comes to spending. So, I mean, I, I just I just think guys that it's 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 still the people are still going to fill the stadiums. The tailgates are going to be just as good. And what has happened, Rob? When you talk about NIL money, okay, I'm giving you $5 million this year. It may not be towards a facility enhancement and maybe towards a combination of facilities slash NIL money. So, I mean, that's that's been going on, guys, for the last two or three years. You guys know that. So, yeah. I mean, the, the money's still going to be spent. It's just going to be spent differently. Now, you can also make the case that how do we improve our facilities long term from a foot maintenance standpoint if we don't have the institutional sport and some of our top boosters are given the more to NIL instead of facilities? Yeah. So that's that's a legitimate question, too. Yeah. And Vince Ferrara is on with us from the Sports Animal in Knoxville. And Vince, just, just when everybody starts completing these massive uh, upwards of $100 million football only facilities uh, where they do everything but, you know, brush the student athletes' teeth for them and, 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 and clothe them. Uh, now, at the end of the day, you could build a new facility at, in Knoxville. And when you before the recruit and his entourage, which, which could be, uh, you know, an RV full of his posse, how much are you gonna give me? And, and, and so you could have okay facilities, couldn't you? If you're giving them a bunch of cash in their pocket. Yeah, in, in theory you could, but I, I think it just it's so much of this depends on the level of recruit. The the highest level recruits are going to be able to pick and choose what's most important to them more so than the lower level ones. And are, are you thinking about your basketball or football future above the NIL? And and then it gets into your personal priorities also. But um, and then how you spend that money? Like we we heard a lot about the the Lady Vols basketball program and and how. You know, some were saying that you know Kelly Harper wasn't able to you know get some of the top players they were in on because in the way they were doing the the money in NIL with the collective for the Lady Vols supposedly was that they would give money to more of the transfers and existing players versus the high school players. So if you're a top high school player and 
it, the money, the NIO is most important to you, then maybe you go elsewhere. If, if the basketball part of it is more important, then maybe you go to where the basketball can develop you for the next level. But the lower level recruits, uh, those are the ones that uh, have to look at it in different ways. Do they just jump on the money how they can get it? Or are, are they going to make more of a future decision because the NIL isn't massive in, in any of those opportunities for, for any of them? So it, it really varies on the prospect and, and the schools, how they look at it. Yeah. Bo Carter, you heard what Vince just said. There's maybe 33 five stars a year in, in high school football out of 3,300 plus kids that sign. Of course, I think we're going to have to adjust those numbers now because not as many high school players are being signed because portal guys are just moving around from school to school. Is that how you see it? Yeah, a great point on the uh, uh, you know your, your high school kids and and same, like, brought up a point too about junior college uh, players too. They're they're sort of left left out there. You know they're going to go after an experience. Robbie of uh, Avila at uh, Indiana State over a uh, yeah. eighteen year old. What interesting deal! In the last couple of weeks, uh, man's probably seen this too. The the G League uh, sort of a rookie league team that they have is dissolving because the. Uh, the NIL more or less put them out of business. They, I think their uh, their minimum salary, and they were they were supposed to get uh, sort of life lessons and you know etiquette etiquette uh, <laughs> possibilities or whatever. But one hundred teaching that. I know. I, Rob, <laughs> Rob, you and I are mad, and uh, Vince need to go back to that probably. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, they uh, but that that was one hundred seventy five thousand dollar minimum guarantee, and now you know, most uh, the five stars are getting twice that or even three times that amount. So. Uh, it's it's just uh, I, I I totally agree with Matt. I think they're going to have to have some sort of a salary cap or a, a player pool fund or something that's that will bring a little bit of sanity to it somehow. <laughs> yeah, uh, Vince, spring practice is underway up in Knoxville. Uh, Lama Leva played in the Iowa game. Looked really good. He's a true freshman, six five, two hundred five pounds. Uh, let's talk about him, the quarterback competition at Tennessee, and what you, you've seen that makes you think that 2024 is going to be the year of the Volunteers. I really like this football team, uh, guys. Uh, Nico, to me, has all that it takes. He's got he, – obviously, he's got the, the talent, the arm strength, uh, came in with the recruiting hype, but – Make no mistake, even if he was kind of known as the NIL quarterback or player uh, from a couple of years ago, this kid is about ball. He the Practice is different, especially at the quarterback position with him there. He's about business. He talks to his players, his receivers, tight ends, backs. Uh, uh, after so many reps, he's communicating with them. Miles Kitzelman, who's a was a reserve tight end at Alabama. He's one of the two transfer tight ends in that room. He told the story when I asked him about Nico. He said, well, you know, you, I knew of him. I didn't know what he was going to be like. And he pulled me aside and said, hey, anything you need, you let me know. Uh, I, you know, I'm excited that you're here. Can't wait to work with you. Let's throw, that kind of stuff. So he, he doesn't carry himself like a – five-star that just has anointed everything and got on this team. But make no mistake, there is no quarterback competition at Tennessee. Yeah. Maybe for the fans there was last year, but number eight, Nico Iamaliava is the guy. He acts like the guy in terms of, you know, just kind of just being the, the dude without being the hype guy. He's about business. He's so accurate, and you won't even see the best Nico until the games because with his skill set, it's about the playmaking and ability to throw on the run. Uh, yeah. With his, those were things that they really did not do as much as they should have last year. He, he'll he'll put his best foot forward, no pun intended, once they get in the games this year. But he's been really impressed. Say his name one more time because I have a. Uh, I mean, Matt and, and Bo and I, it's Nico Ialamaliva. 
Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Iamaleava. 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 Okay. And he's from California. Is that, yeah. I mean, what, what's his weight up to now? Uh, about 215. He put on 15 pounds last year. Wow. Uh, he might be a little bit uh, bigger than that. You could tell he has filled out more. He's more muscular than he was last year. He came in super rail thin, but he is more filled out. It is noticeable with him. You know, he'll continue to, to add that weight with that big, uh, long frame. He's got the the ability to do that. But, man, accuracy, uh, the arm strength, um, and then just everybody raves about him. It's a very different approach than it was Joe Milton. And that, I think this, this offense will run a lot crisper and have more big plays with Nico. And, and everybody wanted Nico last year, but I think they'll be better with Nico in his second year because now he's fully ready, more of an understanding yeah. of the offense. And be more mature. He learned under Joe Milton, saw some of those mistakes. It's not like the Nico you see this year would have been the Nico they would have last year had they played him. It's just the perfect segue to him this year. Matt Dean, the quarterback we're talking about, is named? Is Nico. <laughs> say, say, Nico. Say it again. <laughs> Mama called him Nico, Daddy called him Nico. Right? Hey, but I like what Vince just said about him. Now, a lot of a lot of coaches, and they have to, it's, it's just surviving and what we're dealing with. They're not putting out a depth chart. But you saw him in the Iowa game last year. Yeah. But he's six six, uh, can can do it all. And if he's dedicated to making everybody around him better, isn't that the ultimate uh, teammate? Listen, Iowa had a top five national defense last year. I know they didn't have a lot of tape, Vince, on him because he didn't play a ton last year, but he made them with his ability to run and throw the ball. Uh, Iowa was one of their worst defensive games of the year in that bowl game. Now, you saw how bad Iowa's offense was, and I saw one of our listeners made a comment about Iowa importing some skill players in offense. Good luck with that. But I think, in a, in a way, Vince, he reminds me of a young Jaden Daniels. We'll see if that – you know, continues to evolve because you look at the frame. I think he's a little taller than Jaden. He throws a real nice ball. He's explosive. When he gets into space, man, good luck. I like Jaden Daniels. You know, you just got to avoid those big hits. And I think they'll be able to protect him in the pocket some too. So. Yeah. And, and Bo, you look at college football and Vince, Matt, we all do. These quarterbacks are coming in now as true freshmen. Mm -hmm. They're, they're so different from what we saw even five years ago. I, I mean, maybe it's because the money they're getting, Vince. I mean, did, are you noticing that – I mean, I don't know if they ever talked. It, it's really weird. I, nobody I'm around talks about how much money they make. You know, I mean, and, and again, the, the, the wealthiest people I know uh, drive old cars. And even – they most of – they don't – they almost – don't want people to know because then everybody's pulling on them, Vince. Why wouldn't these 18 year olds kind of follow that advice? Uh, that's, I mean, so I'm, I'm telling you, Vince, you'd be a, you really would be a great agent because you've seen so much. I mean, you could talk to these guys, but it, it's the 20 or 30 people that are just wearing them out, isn't it? That that's what you got to keep them, keep away from them. That's what I would think. Yeah, you, you have to be aware of, you know, who, who runs in those circles around those guys where their influence is. Those are some of the things that you probably learn a little bit in the recruiting process, right? right who, what, what's a package deal with this guy besides the parent? You know, who else is, you know, there at the bit with, with him at the visit? And, uh, you know, who are the influences? Does he have a quarterback coach that, wants to be involved or his former high school coach that, uh, you know, can't let go and let him kind of spread his wings. So those are all the things that it, it is on the school to learn yeah. and understand what comes with those, those players, because guess what? Those could potentially be headaches if it's the wrong people, the wrong influencers that, that want to have a say in things. But yeah. uh, 
that's more the case in, in basketball than football, but the, it's probably the case in football to some degree for some guys. But, I mean, Nico comes across as so mature. He talks about everybody else before him and the flag. He, he, he so many interviews before he ever made, made it to Tennessee and Rocky Top. Yeah. It gives him an advantage in, in being able to handle the scrutiny and the, uh, and the expectations that he's going to have. At the- yeah, I, that's a great take, Vince. Bo, I remember there were some guys that they would be like, just don't ever put a microphone in front of them. <laughs> uh, you know, they can't speak or whatever. In most of this stuff, sports information directors, you, you, are, you are basically corralling all the media. I still use the term SID because that's that's what they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just I, I remember I remember Bo Jackson how much he stuttered when he got to yeah. Auburn. Mm-hmm. And you know I'm a speech com major in college, uh, mass com, minor in business and history. Man, ninety five percent of stuttering is psychological. Mm-hmm. And when if you can do anything, if you can get a young man or woman to be comfortable being interviewed. Isn't that a big deal? Because, man, everybody is watching what they do. And whatever they get in NIL, they'll probably blow through most of that, if not all of it. But the real NIL comes after they leave, and then someone like you has followed their career and can network them in with unbelievable job opportunities. Yeah, Correct. That, that's yeah, that's a perfect perfect point, Rob. You know, and, and again, that was the recruiting sort of pitch when uh, uh, I remember yeah, speaking of that too. Well, two things: Neil Jeffrey, remember the great Baylor quarterback, who led Baylor to the Southwest Conference Championship in '74, had a major wow. stuttering problem, and they, he he couldn't call plays. I mean, they some sometimes he would be stuttering so bad. One of the other guys would see plays sent him from the sideline, but his. Uh, Speech therapist and future wife got him down, and he's been a, a minute, Baptist minister for about forty years, which is really wow. one of the one of the most sought after uh, speakers in the circuit around the Dallas area. But uh, that, and then as a, as an old sports information director, as we, the the antiquated term, uh, Vince probably remembers this. Bud Ford and Haywood Harris at Tennessee would have to yeah. call. You'd have a meeting right after the coaches got through doing orientation. You you go in, you talk to them about. Uh, don't don't take any phone calls from gamblers. Here's what you uh, it, it, we'll, we'll set up your interviews for you, et cetera. And the the other thing was uh, they'd have an FBI come in right behind the PR people and say, "Hey, here are the evils of gambling. Here's what happened in Kentucky in 1952." And CC now now gambling sports gambling is legal in 37. States. So what do you what do you do? Just don't you don't don't bet on don't bet more than than you have in your bank account, I guess, or something. So it's just, it's absolutely nuts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, go. sorry, Bud is a beauty and he's still a uh, sort of, I think he has sort of a, a light historian role at the university of Tennessee. Which yes. is Tennessee. And, and, and let me say this real quick on Tennessee. You mentioned Rob, the, the freshman thing that is no longer a thing, especially at Tennessee. Tennessee brings, does avails for their own, bringing out freshmen like we get a chance to talk to almost all of them unless you know they, they don't have a projected they have a big role or something but we talk to all the uh, almost all the top plus some of the veterans this team makes three four five different players available and they're cycling through all the assistant coaches so with nil opportunities are out there in the day pro athlete college experience Oh, Vince, Vince is breaking up a little bit, but Matt, I'm going to throw something out to everybody here. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction, and Vince, we lost you there for a minute, but I'll make a prediction. In the, in the next two or three years, I will not be surprised if a bunch more access is given to coaches, players, and practice for the public. Because while all that's all we hear about is what the players want, we're not hearing about what the fans want. Wait until we have collective bargaining on the part of the fans and the boosters. And they go in there and they say, hold on a second. This is a state university. Most of these are state universities. Sunshine laws, 
open air. They're going to start. You're going to start seeing. There's going to be a breaking point because we all read these comments. But every time I talk to groups of people, they're like going, this is BS. I'm not funding this. I am a successful business owner. I have four companies that I run. And they'll say, I would never run a business like this unless I wanted to run it into the ground. So I think there's going to be some victories for the fans. And if I'm an athletic director, I invite the fans to everything I can. And I know some of them can be a pain in the ass. Well, what was interesting last night, guys, and I don't know if you saw this, Vince, I watched a little bit of the um, Arkansas presser for um, John, Coach Calipari coming to Arkansas. And probably the guy that got the biggest ovation was, I think his name is, is John Tyson. John Tyson, Tyson. Yeah. yes. I mean, the whole Bud Wall Arena is like giving him a standing ovation. It was more than they, <laughs> they actually welcomed Calipari, it seemed like. I know they were excited about him getting there, but I think fans are very appreciative of the few behind the scenes that can help their institutions maintain some sanity in these really tough economic times. And I, I know that sounds crazy, but like back in the old days, Bo, it was like, you know, McDonald's bag full of cash by a bag man. Now it's pretty uh, open. And we're going to introduce Tyson, uh, who just <laughs> helped increase our NIL pool and helped with John Kelpar's contract. And, I, and it's just the way it is. That's yeah. just the way it is. And Rob, Rob Schmier with John Tyson. Actually, he is also the uh, – Tyson Foods is the corporate sponsor for the uh, Black College Baseball World Series for small colleges in Montgomery that will be played uh, – I, I did not know yeah, that. Yeah. that. That's what good. They, they've been so generous to, and they they gave out uh, eighty thousand pounds of uh, food to underserved families in Mo, in Montgomery last year. But wonderful people that really have a a, a great oh. feel for the uh, for the uh, you know for the community community service etc. And uh, uh, John Tyson, I think, was a, a classmate or year ahead of our friend Charlie Fizz, who's the longtime uh, PR director for the Cotton Bowl. So those guys, wow. are good they're spring day. I told Charlie, I said. I, I, I thought you might become better friends with him at Springdale High School. <laughs> well, hey, listen, you talk about donors. I was I was with all those Arkansas folks at that lunch meeting yesterday. It was fantastic. Uh, Alice Walton, one of the Waltons, was concerned about, I think, $2 billion a year leaving the state of Arkansas of health care because it couldn't be you know, taken care of within the state. Well, what is Alice Walton doing? She's doubling the size of the hospital up there in Northwest Arkansas to make things better for Arkansas people. Uh, Vince Ferrara, think about this every time you're at a pilot gas station eating a death dog with extra onions and mustard. You are helping fund Tennessee. And Bud Ford, Haywood Harris, you know, Bob Kessling, in my opinion, the Vol Network, watching, I remember... I used to, as a kid, and I know I'm nuts, but I would write to sports information directors all over the SEC in the South for their media guides. Nobody sent more stuff than Clemson. I mean, my God, you'd get like you'd have to have a spotter to take it out of the mailbox with you. But so did Tennessee. They had 151 stations on the Vol Network at one time. A lot of that was AM, FM, you know, in the same city, but. They were everywhere. But what I always remember about Tennessee and my good man, my good friend, John David Badur, he's listening right now from Covington. I mean, Tennessee fans, uh, they all would have their headsets on at the games. I mean, it's like, and I always tell people, if you've been to the Smithsonian or if you've been to the uh, Metropolitan Museum uh, uh, up in New York, if you don't get the, it used to be Walter Cronkite going, welcome to the museum. You'll see a fine tour here today of many exhibits from all over the world. you got to have the radio. Vince, don't ever, ever stop doing what you do because if you go to a game in a 100,000-seat stadium without earphones on, you have no idea what's going on. That's why it's so important to have these radio shows. But the Vol Network was the biggest of any college in America, if I'm not mistaken. And I see Matt shaking his head because deep down inside, what did he do? <laughs> oh, he's, I mean, talk about that because that's big. 
Yeah, there, there's no doubt about it. There's still so much pride. I, I don't know where it stands in terms of number of, of affiliates around the country because you know Learfield has grown so much. They've added to their family, and so um, you know there, there's others that have grown also. But uh, you know, tons of pride in it, and obviously it starts with John Ward. Uh, people still hold in such high regard. And, uh, and yeah, was, there's, there's a lot of great talent. And, you know, when, football, when, when the football team is good, everything else kind of falls into place after yeah. that. There's a lot of sports that are, are, are going at a high level right now. We air on our team. We are football, men's and women's basketball, baseball, and softball. Uh, I don't know how many can, can air that many different sports yeah. uh, Station with a flagship, so uh, we, we give them a lot of exposure. And, and myself and my partner on my show, John Wilkerson, we baseball together. We host the morning show together. So there's a lot of opportunities for, for uh, the brand to be out there, and um, it's a, a, a lot of pride in being a part of the network. Yeah, it, it's huge, Matt Dean. I know you've got to check out, but uh, closing comments. Well. Probably a little bit off the tangent here, Vince, but I just want to let you know I uh, I pulled for Kim Caldwell, but I was a friend of Kelly Harper's. Uh, my former assistant, Jennifer Sullivan, worked for Kelly two years at UT. She's now the FAU head coach, and I wish Kelly the best. I wish UT Lady Ball basketball the best. I just know, you know, it's uh, one of the most difficult jobs in, in America because of what Pat did for us in women's basketball. So pulling for Kim Caldwell, but uh, hoping Kelly Harper will uh, find her next gig here in the next year. So, yeah. Hey, hey, look. hey, Matt, love having you on here. Always uh, great commentary because you are, you are, as Kevin Strabinski calls you, you're a hoop head. But uh, Vince, you had something to say. No, I was just saying, I was just backing up Matt that those are uh, nice comments. And Kelly was super, super nice. And yeah, it's a different level of scrutiny with the shadow of Matt Summit when you play for him. Yes. Uh, coaches have. So, Kim Caldwell did a great job in her press conference. Saying, hey, I, I don't, I don't need to, to study up on that summit like too much. Too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we we I'll tell you one thing: a lot of storms here in the South today, uh, <laughs> losing people left and right. Hey, we're getting shrinking. Soon it will just be me. But Bo Carter, uh, you're talking about these legacies that you've got to try to. And Vince, keep going. You were you were rolling. I know Matt had to get to a meeting, but keep going. Yeah, sorry about that. I was just saying that uh, the new lady said, I'm not Pat Summit. No one ever will be. But I just want to strive to be someone that she would be proud of. So that that's the best way you can handle that. Got to get results. Transfer portal gives you at least an opportunity to redo your roster. You can have a completely different style of play so, than before because they're going to be shoot a bunch of threes, get up and down the floor, try to force turnovers. And that's the reason why Danny White chose her with only one year of T1 experience as a head coach after selling on D2. It was an interesting hire with a lot of big opinions on it. We'll see how it plays out with that sports program. We'll be the fourth coach ever of that Lady Ball program. Yeah. Well, you know, the bottom line is, Bo, I know you've got to get going too. We got a, It's a wild day here today, but uh, trying to replace a coach – You'll never replace the Pat Summit with, what, eight national championships. Two coaches have tried, and now here, here we go again. But bottom line is the, the interest. What, what we're seeing now, women's and men's basketball, I've been saying this for a while. I'm not, and again, I'm not the only one that says it, but the women's game is a more pure form of the game. It's played below the rim. It's a lot more strategies, X's and O's. But you look at these TV numbers. And you love to digest those TV numbers. When Iowa and LSU played, it outdrew three of last year's NBA finals. <laughs> the message is, uh, you know, keep your politics and all that crap off the court. You know, I don't want to hear. I don't care what you think. Just shut up and dribble. Kind of focus on the game. That's what people want. That Thompson Bowling Arena, what mem- let, women's basketball at Tennessee and at UConn. And now at Iowa and LSU, and for God's sake, South Carolina. <laughs> Holy cow. They lose, what, all their starters from last year mm-hmm. with one loss and come back with five new starters and win them all. 
This is this is the these are the halcyon days of women's basketball, aren't they? It, it really is. And uh, you, you've you got the Caitlin Clark, you got the star power, uh, yeah. Paige Beckers, this uh, Hannah Hidalgo at Notre Dame is going to be the next, uh, and J Juju Watkins at uh, uh, Southern Cal. The schools have done, Vince knows this too, the schools have done a great job promoting them who yeah. are you know, 30, 25, 30 point a game scores at least. And yeah. I think the legacy is going to continue. ESPN's really, uh, you know, <laughs> ESPN's pretty much into self promotion, but they've done a great job and, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, really, really keying in on the games, and I think that's where the ratings came from. They, they, they uh, used the superstar concept, and and you know, fans, fans, you're, Rob, you hit the nail on the head. There's a lot better to me. It seems like a lot better passing, and uh, uh, you know, more unselfish play in women's basketball. Even though yeah. you've got big scores than uh, than the men's sport a lot of times. So it's <laughs> it's fun to watch. The fans get into it, and uh, it's a it's not not a cult deal, but it's it's just a, you know something that's entertaining and. Uh, uh, you give it the old college, you know, the, the, the college loyalties kick in there, too. Yeah, it is. Well, Bo, look, uh, we'll be doing this again next week. Great stuff, as always. Gave us some new names, the up and coming. Who is the next Caitlin Clark? When you start talking like that, that tells you there's a lot of interest. But, uh, Bo Carter, be good out there in the Metroflex. Vince, good. Thank you guys so much. Enjoyed it. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Vince, uh, been a wild one today, but. I, I like what you said about Nico. That's really good because, again, when Monday, you know, Sunday night when all the chatter was out there about John Calipari going from Kentucky to Arkansas, Vin, uh, Mitch Davis, one of our young reporters, uh, members of the sidelines team, was saying, is this, you know, West Moore guy legit? I said, yeah, he's on our show most Mondays. And we had West on the show Monday talking about that. And Kevin Skarbinski said, you know, hats off to you. This is a big win for a local, you know, local reporters. Uh, you know, the West is the ESPN 103.7, the Buzz Daily Show in Little Rock. Also, uh, sports director, Fox Sports Channel 16 in the capital city. And he broke that story. And he, he had to check and recheck and check and recheck. You know what I'm talking about. Trust but verify. Broke that story and... He came on our show Monday before he did his own show. And but that's big. There's that's what SEC Sidelines Sports Network and SECU is all about. We have the best executive producer I've ever seen in Brendan Martin, Buddy Son. And I get to be on their show and we're building this network. That's why you're part of this. And we want your show to where when people fly forty thousand feet over, you know, from New York to LA. You got to be able to drill down local. I mean, I'm not saying the guys at ESPN don't know what they're doing, but there's no way in the world they know as much about Tennessee as you do. And then you, I love that Bud Ford, Haywood Harris, all those guys. Claude Felton at Georgia, uh, Norm Carlson was great at Florida. Lang, you know, uh, uh, golly, Langston Rogers at Ole Miss, uh, Bob Hartley, of course, Bo Carter was at. at, at at Mississippi State forever, uh, Schaefer at Arkansas. Does anybody know more than those guys? See, that's that's where I'm going. The more you drill down, the deeper you drill down, you get better stories, don't you? You do, and you know, with those debate shows, it usually kind of highlights when they start talking about your local team. It really highlights how they don't know reading a headline or googling yeah. real. Quick. It's just not. It's just not the same. Now, it's also impressive when you have national broadcasters. Like during the NCAA tournament, I was there in Detroit, uh, right there courtside, talking about the Vol Network. I was yeah. right courtside sitting next to Bob and Bird on headsets with them. I did halftime stats, and so that was an unbelievable experience. But um, then I'd go back, yeah, I'd sit there in hand, but then you go back and watch the TV broadcast to see what those guys said, if there's some different perspectives that you might have missed. And when, when those guys like Steve Lapis or, or anyone else, Jim Jackson, yeah. when they can give you details about the team that, you know, maybe others that didn't do their homework wouldn't get, that's a validation that they put in their homework. So yeah. we're all able to identify who does the work and who just shows up because of their name and who, where they played and, uh, and who they coach. So, um, it, it, it does show a lot, but yeah, local, 
is where you find out the details. Like I'm headed as soon as I take my dog to, to the vet, I'm headed to use at UT off running back coach, the special teams coordinator, three players. So I'll have details and know what those, what's going on with those guys. Whereas someone from the outside, you won't have those details yet. So, uh, it's, it's in the weeds like that. You know? Yeah, it, it is. You're, you're right, man. Hey, look, great show today. Everybody, uh, subscribe on YouTube, follow all of our sponsors at sidelines.live Hewlett and Dunn boot and clothing company, uh, house industries, Gateway Tire and Service Center, The Vitamin Shop, Oxford in Olive Branch, Mississippi, and Rumble Boxing in Midtown Memphis. Uh, look, Vince, uh, let people know how they can follow you. And, uh, again, love having you on. You're another one of those Swiss Army knives. You can talk Vols, but you can talk the big picture. Uh, but when you drill down local, folks, put that app on your phone. Vince, tell them how. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, I love the draft, too, because we yeah. combine football <laughs> NFL, those two worlds. So uh, anything with the draft coming up in terms of Tennessee players of the SEC, we're glad to hit that up in, in the future. And then we got the orange and white game. Eight SEC teams with orange with uh, with spring games on Saturday. A lot of them at the same time, which is a little unusual. Yeah. But we'll we'll talk about Tennessee in the weeks to come. But always fun to be on with you uh, on socials: Instagram, Facebook, uh, X, formerly Twitter. Vince Sports, V I N T Sports, and then uh, give me a, a subscribe on YouTube for YouTube channel, and then our station podcast at ninety nine one the Sports Animal dot com in the podcast section for our morning show, lots of videos and a ton of other content. Yeah, I, I have now renamed Twitter and X. I call it Twix. That's that's the new name. Kind of Roy D Mercer. Uh, listen, how long are you gonna be out there? Uh, well, I'll be out there all day. Well, I'll be out there Twix uh, one and two. So you better be. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'll be, I'll be looking for you. All right, all right, great stuff. Hey, we live in the greatest country in the history of the world, people. Most often we see the face of Christ in the least among us. Go out, help people out. Do great things for people. Kind words and kind deeds. But more important than anything else, great follow through. Vince, good luck with those dogs today at a UT veterinarian's office. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. We are out of here. In a perfect world, you'd set a health goal and results would happen overnight. In this world, the real world, it takes time, dedication, and the right support to achieve your best self. The Vitamin Shops health enthusiasts are here to make sure you're not wasting a single moment on the wrong supplements. From the highest quality sports nutrition and superfoods to the most sought after trends, you'll find a huge variety of science-backed solutions for every goal. And the people to help guide you along the path to greatness. Unbelievably, every two minutes in our communities, a child is either bought or sold for sex. I am Ari Dickey, board member for the Nashville Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition. Join me and millions of others in our fight against human trafficking and for its victims by helping to educate the most vulnerable among us, our middle and high school students. Go to nhtcoalition.org, become a partner, and help keep our families safe, because none of God's children are for sale.